Hello again everyone. I am back to do another reading vlog. I realized it's been so long since I've done a reading vlog because I just haven't really felt in the mood to read but I'm back in the mood to read which I'm really excited about so I want to do another one and that's like the whole reason why I started my channel so I'm excited to be doing another one and first I want to start off with a little thrift haul because I went thrifting today and <laughs> the first thing I got well one of the things I got is this travel mug but it looks like a camera lens so I thought it was really cute. I picked it up at the thrift store and I was like a camera lens sitting with the cups but it's actually a cup so I thought that, that was really cute. Then I also got these stickers because I love to send stickers and also scrapbook and I just thought they were really pretty particularly this one I like this one. I also got a stamp because I have a large and always growing rubber stamp collection so it's a castle so beautiful and that's pretty much it for the thrift haul that was pretty much what I got today. I have also been getting a few books since the last time I talked with y'all and I have picked up Howard's End by E.M. Forrester. I think that this is a classic. I don't know. It looks old. <laughs> and then I got Dennis Johnson's Train Dreams. I got Ellen Hildebrand's The Perfect Couple. And I think that's it for thrifted books. And then I've been going to a lot of independent bookstores recently. So at one of them, I picked up The Lost Bookshop, which is another option for something that I could be reading this week. And then I went to go visit a friend and her sweet, sweet mom bought me a book because she wanted to buy each of us a book. So I got Sea of Tranquility. And it was kind of funny because I was standing there looking it up on Goodreads to see if it was a highly rated book. And within the tab, the bookstore owner had placed like tabs and it said like awarded best science fiction of 2022 or something. I don't know if that was the year, but it was like awarded best science fiction. I was like, why am I wasting my time looking it up? It literally says that it's good <laughs> in the book. So I'm really excited to read that one. And I'm kind of in the mood for science fiction. I don't know. First this week though, I want to pick up the Jane Austen book club because I have been holding Katie's copy of Atonement hostage and I have not been in the mood to read that because I know it's kind of devastating or I think that it is. I don't know. I think that's what she told me and everyone cries at the movie so I'm scared. But she gave me her copy of the Jane Austen book club also to borrow and I feel terrible holding two of her books hostage. So I'm going to read this one because I know that I love the movie for this. She actually showed it to me and it's so good. I absolutely love it. We've watched it twice now together and I really want to read the book. I'm excited to read the book. So it doesn't seem all that long. Let me see. Yeah. Whoa. This is really short, like 250 pages. Does that look like 250 pages? Look, there's a paperback, kind of similar sizes, right? Let's see how long this one is. Whoa, what is this? What is this in the back? Uh, wait, the format on this is super strange. I don't even know what's going on in this book. Honestly, I'm really excited. This like makes me more intrigued because the format's super weird. But this one's super short. 250-ish pages too. Wait, am I just bad at guessing how long books are? Because I really would have told you these were longer. Okay, here's the Lost Bookshop. This one looks thicker, right? Let's guess how many pages. I think this one's going to be 350. <gasps> See, I'm not crazy. This one is 434 pages and this one's like 250. That doesn't look double the size, right? I don't know. I think I'm just trying to make myself feel better. Anyways, I really want to read this first and then I have all those other options to read this week. Okay, and then quickly, I also want to talk about the books that I have read in the break that I took from making reading vlogs. And the first was No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy. And this book was pretty good. It's definitely not in my genre. I don't know if it's like modern Western or modern classic, but also this book just kind of feels dry and not in a bad way dry, but just dry in the way that it's like not flowery writing or lyrical in any way, shape or form. And he just tells you what's happening as it's happening and there's really nothing else going on behind the scenes. You just have to kind of pick up on the themes as you go based on the blunt things that he's telling you. But this was a pretty short book. It was 300 pages and I will say the biggest gripe that I have about this book is the writing and Cormac McCarthy is considered like a great American author and I can appreciate that in this book but I do want to give you some examples of sentences that drove me crazy and they're like throughout the book. At least one a chapter. I would say 
maybe five a chapter is more of a realistic number for these sentences but I have to read you one because I pay attention to writing a lot as I'm reading. In my opinion you can't separate content and form so when I was reading it it was just throwing me off really badly so let me find some of the sentences that I'm talking about. Okay this all happens this is on page 35 so it's not very much spoilery but this all happens in the span of like two paragraphs and I'm just gonna pick sentences from them not necessarily like in chronological order but they're like this close together all of these sentences within it says his arm was swollen and throbbing but the bleeding seemed to have stopped and he walked out into the sun on a gravel bar and sat there and pulled off the boots and looked at the raw red sores on his heels he cut off the sleeves at the elbow and sat and wrapped his feet in them and pulled on the boots he put the knife in back of the holster and fastened it and picked up the pistol and stood and listened. It's just, this man loves and, and there's longer sentences that are just run on sentences where he did this and he did this and he did this and he did this and. It's literally like a broken record. I just wanted him to use a comma so badly and I know that's a stylistic choice, but while reading it, I just kept putting emphasis on the and because it was kind of comical and ridiculous how many times he would use the word and. I don't know if he gets away with that because it's a stylistic choice and he's like a great American author or whatever, but I literally couldn't stand it. It was driving me up a wall while I was reading this. This book was okay. Actually, I enjoyed it and I would say it's like a, in between a three and a four, I'd, it just wasn't my genre. I can see how a lot of people would really love this, but it was fine. It was good. I liked it and I liked the messaging behind it, but other than that, it didn't really stick with me all that much. As always, I forgot to say what the books that I'm reading are about, so No Country for Old Man is a book about a man that lives in like a trailer house with his wife and he goes out one night and finds basically a crime scene that hasn't been discovered yet and then he follows a blood trail and finds a man that has a briefcase with like two million dollars in it or something crazy and he takes it and then from there he's followed and kind of hunted and it's the story of him being hunted basically. So it's really interesting and very compelling. last book I've read recently, I promise I'm gonna wrap this up quickly, is Not in Love by Allie Hazelwood because I went to the book signing and I had never read an Allie Hazelwood book before. And in the beginning of this book, it tells you that this book is going to be different than her other books and I was just not expecting how different I guess this book was gonna be. This is not really my genre of romance, I guess. It was good, but I wouldn't really recommend it necessarily to someone especially if they weren't a romance reader, like this is kind of a lot. And I don't know, my sister and I were talking and the plot in this book is just so painfully predictable. And if you like a comforting kind of like, you know what's gonna happen and you kind of know where the plot is going, like maybe this book would be for you. I'm not really sure, but I thought it was fine. Like it wasn't groundbreaking or anything like that. The romance was pretty good, but I don't know. There were parts where I was kicking my feet, but then most of the book I was just like, so predictable and I really wanted more from it but she kind of set herself up to where there was kind of only one path she could take I guess with the actual like conflict and plot of this book so I don't know I would have to read some of her other books I think to know if this is a good book to judge her on because I feel like people are saying that this is pretty different from her normal writing so I would like to see Lucy own some of her other books so maybe I'll pick one of them up and read it but yeah I don't know I think I gave this book like a three and a half when I first finished it but I would definitely rate it lower now. It was good. I don't regret reading it, I guess, but I don't know. It was just fine. That's exactly how I feel about it. There were some quotes that I really liked, so let me see if I can find one that's not a spoiler. There are two quotes that I want to read you about the main characters falling in love, and obviously that's not a spoiler. It's literally a romance book. You can tell by the cover, but if you don't want to know anything about it, because this is a new release, I know, just skip by like a minute maybe, and I'll be done reading the quotes. So page 273 because they are kind of towards the end page 273 says rue laughed again and had he ever yielded more power than right at this moment had anything felt better than making her smile when she'd been crying only moments ago it was intoxicating screw science or finance this could be his craft he could spend the next few years learning the nooks and crannies of her moods studying her temperament cataloging her disposition and all its little idiosyncrasies and once he'd accrued an adequate body of research it would be his mission and his pleasure make rue seibert happy that's just so sweet i love it and then this is rue talking on page 320 it says 
I thought I'd be rid of you by now. I thought I'd sweat you out, but it's like you've stolen a little piece of me. And I'm afraid that when this is over, I'll go back to my life and my shape will have changed just a little, but enough that I'll no longer fit into my lonely angular hole. <sighs> Some of this book is really cute, but then a lot of it is just, in my opinion, a little, little too much. So good, not great. Probably won't be picking up more like this. I don't think, it's also just the plot was so, so predictable. I think that's what's also throwing me off because the romance was good. The plot was okay. I, I don't think the setup of the plot was bad. I think it was just that she set it up in a way that there was only one way that it could go, I guess, is more my problem than anything. It wasn't that the actual premise of the book was bad. I liked the premise because once again, I haven't told you what the premise is. The premise of this is that Rue works at a company for one of her friends, Florence, and she works with her best friend as well. And then Eli and a group of three other people from Harkness come in and they're trying to basically like take over Rue's company. I don't know, I don't know that much about this kind of stuff. But they're trying to take over her company and obviously they're considered like the bad guys and then Rue thinks that her side is in the right and then obviously Eli thinks that he's in the right. So it's kind of this like forbidden, I guess romance is not all that forbidden, but it was really fun meeting Allie Hazelwood. I will say that I really enjoyed meeting her and she's so funny and so was Danielle Allen. They were both hilarious and love them both and would absolutely go to another signing of theirs. I've talked for at least 10 minutes, if not 20. I have literally no idea. I sit down in front of the camera and then my mouth starts running and I have no idea where I've landed. So. It's in the evening. Obviously I'm drinking a coffee out of my lens mug. I love it. And it's 8.40, so I doubt that I'll get that much reading done tonight, but I'm going to start this and then I have a lot of time tomorrow. Honestly, I have a ton of time this week, so I am going to focus on reading this and then I will probably choose my next read with y'all. So. Hopefully I can get into this quickly and get a good chunk of this done today and tomorrow. It is currently 10.03 on Tuesday, July 2nd. So today, Reckless by Lauren Roberts comes out, which is the sequel to Powerless, and I'm pretty excited. So I'm going to go to Barnes & Noble and pick that up in a minute. I did want to give an update, though, on the Jane Austen book club because that was my current read, and I am on page 44. I have not made it very far into this book, and I think what threw me off is that I have watched the movie with my friend Katie, and I love the movie, but the movie is a lot more lighthearted 
than this book. There's already been mentions of sexual harassment and sexual assault. So I just kind of need to like regroup <laughs> and go back into this book without the expectations that I had from the movie because the movie is a lot more like focused on the romance and like female friendships and this is kind of like the struggles of each woman in here so I am enjoying it. I think it's well written. I will say my least favorite part about it so far is that it does the thing where there's like maybe a page in current timeline and then a page of like backstory from that character and it's going in separate months of when the book club is happening so there's a lot of like jumping around and almost getting into a scene and then it's switching to a different scene and then almost getting into that scene and then switching to a different scene so I'm not necessarily loving that but I think the further I get in I just need to give it time obviously I'm 45 pages in I can't judge it yet so we're gonna go to Barnes and Noble and pick up my copy of Reckless. I keep wanting to call it Powerful, but that was the novella. And I say pick up my copy. I don't have a copy on order or anything, so I hope that they're not like sold out. I don't think that they would. It's literally release day. And it's been out for five minutes at Barnes & Noble, so we should be fine. My Barnes is like not that far away. So I'm going to go get that. I will take y'all with me, and then we'll start reading that today probably, just because I'm not super in the mood for Jane Austen Book Club. I got Reckless and quickly I want to talk about something that I'm a little bit unsure of about this book before I start it just because I've been thinking about this since I read the end of Powerless and I'm not going to really give spoilers I'm going to talk about it really vaguely but basically I'm interested to see the dynamic between the main character and the love interest in this book because of the way that the last one ended. We'll see how it goes. I don't normally like that sort of trope so I'm interested to see how Lauren Roberts does it. I enjoy Lauren Roberts banter a lot so I am excited for this book regardless but I don't know how that trope is going to work in this book and also something I was interested in is this book doesn't look super long. I don't know let me grab Powerless. Yeah I don't know if you can tell you can on camera. Okay this is Powerless and this is Reckless, and this is the sequel. So I don't know, it looks quite a bit shorter, right? And so I'm gonna see how many pages each of them are. Yes, I just checked and Powerless is 494 pages and Reckless is 370, did I just forget? It was literally two seconds ago, 377 pages, so over 100 pages less in this book. And I will say, I thought that this book could have been edited down, so maybe that's what they did. They took all the good stuff and put it in this book and took out all the just excess repetition and things like that. But I'm hoping that that's what they did and it's not just like a lot of repetition in a really short book because that would be even more frustrating. But I cannot judge it before I even start it. I just was noticing the difference because people were talking about how short the novella was because it's also like quite a bit smaller and it's super short so we'll see but I'm going to start reading now and I think that I have read the beginning of this because it was included in this one and I read it as soon as I finished Powerless but I am going to just start from the beginning and reread all of it because obviously like I've read the intro like three times but I still want to read it with the entirety of the story so I'm really excited to get started and Honestly, with it being 377 pages, I could probably finish it today if I really wanted to. So we'll see how much I'm liking it as we go and if I can finish it in one day or not. It's now 2.49 and I fell asleep. I did take a nap. I am on page 60, chapter nine, and the nap is not necessarily indicative of my feeling towards this book. Like I didn't fall asleep because it was that boring, but it's also not that interesting. I don't know. It's very much okay, like so-so thus far, but I wouldn't be 
saying that and having a check-in if 60 pages wasn't like a decent chunk for the book if you can see like yeah like 60 pages like right there just because this book is like relatively short so i'm on page 60 and like stuff has happened yeah but i think the thing that's throwing me off about this book is that the first one was very much a romance book with like a fantasy backdrop and this one is kind of like i guess fantasy book with romance backdrop it's an easy read no question about that lauren roberts writing is super easy to get through and i am enjoying myself it's just nothing really noteworthy has happened i have one tab i tabbed it because really and truly i was like well just in case there's like nothing else i want to tab in this book because when i do my reading wrap-ups for the month in my reading journal i like to have at least one quote so i don't know it's just the last last book there were so many things that i was tabbing and that's just how i'm feeling so far i really really should not be judging it but I'm gonna keep going and see if things like drastically change and I start giggling and kicking my feet. Hopefully I do. I was a little bit bored up until this point, but now I'm on page 80 and I feel like things are about to start picking up and I'm really, really excited. <laughs> I've just reached chapter 15, page 104, and I wanted to say there was a good scene i would say in terms of like banter and things like that just now that happened from like page 90 ish to page 104 and i'm liking it but again we've already seen this scene in the last book and we saw it a couple of times in the last book maybe even like a handful of times and it's pretty much the same thing in a different setting and it's like we've gotten it over and over and over and i really want something new I don't know. I don't know why. I just, I don't know what I expected from this book, but so far it's not much different, I feel like, than the first book, but like not in the way that all my favorite parts of that book are in this book, but more so that it's just like a lot of the same things, I guess. Like the relationship still hasn't developed or really changed. I don't know. I don't know, I'm trying to be really vague because I don't want to give any spoilers because obviously this book just came out today, but it's fine. It's fine so far. Like, that was a good scene and I shouldn't be complaining about it, but it's just we've seen that scene before multiple times in the last book and I was really hoping for something different in this book because the last book was so repetitive and we got a scene that was well done and then we would get it over and over and over so us getting another one of the exact same scene i will say there was something in the relationship that happened that i wasn't expecting one thing but it was kind of like out of place i don't know i don't know how i'm feeling about this so far it's like okay i think that if i end up really liking it i'll be okay with the things that are happening so far that i'm like not super duper loving i'm not hating it either though it's just very middle of the road right now so We'll see. It definitely is picking up from the beginning. The beginning was pretty slow, I feel like. And I don't know, first 60 pages maybe were slow, but that's not terrible. But first 60 pages in a 377 page book is kind of a lot considering it's a, a fan row and fan rows usually pick up pretty quick. I'm trying not to be a complainer about this, but I do already have some tabs. So I am liking it. It's just definitely not powerless so far, but I don't need it to be powerless, but I would like for it to be close, maybe. And there were things that I didn't like about powerless, so if this didn't do those as much, then I would be happier with this book. So we'll just see. I'll keep reading. Page 118. We're getting somewhere. I'm excited. Okay, I've just made it to chapter 23, page 166, and something I wanted to mention is that in the first book, a lot of people complained about the lack of world building, and the world building isn't like crazy improved in this book but i will say there is a little bit more like the world's kind of expanding and we're not getting reasons for everything that happened in the first book or like why the world is the way that it is so i wouldn't i hesitate to call it like strong world building but i guess the world is being expanded a little bit in this book which i do appreciate and also i'm enjoying it a lot more at this point i was kind of neither here nor there about it in the beginning but now i'm actually having fun i'm giggling and the banter is pretty good i'm enjoying it and i'm not liking it as much as the first one but you can tell lauren roberts writing is definitely 
the same in this one in terms of how good the banter is. I like how she kind of switched up in this book. I was thinking it was going to be just more of the same from the first one, but the plot has kind of taken a turn that I wasn't necessarily expecting and I'm really liking that a lot. So I'm going to keep reading and see if I enjoy the rest of the book and hope that this isn't just like a brief point in time where she's changing it a little bit and then we go back to it because I really hope we continue to follow this storyline. Okay, I have just made it to 200 and things have been really good, but I have to go take a walk because I have done nothing all day other than go get this book. So I'm gonna go take a walk and then when I get back, I'll continue reading. It's pretty good, I'm liking it. to come in this series, page 324. It's finally happening. <laughs> the beginning of page 342. Well, the end of page 341 and the beginning of page 342. I'm literally about to start crying. It's so cute. Ugh. And I'm almost out of tabs. Look, I have one and one. I have two tabs left. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll talk about this tomorrow. <laughs> Hello again everyone. It is the next day and I have finished Reckless and I don't know how to feel about this. I'm kind of like back and forth because I obviously read it in one day so it was good enough that I'm not like it wasn't that good you know I couldn't really get through it. Like it's not that kind of like disappointment and I don't disappointments are really heavy words. So I don't necessarily know that I want to use that word. I think that this was on par with Powerless and Powerless I think had more of a plot. I don't know that it was a better plot but I think that it did have more of a plot. This one like had one plot that we were working towards kind of but it was also kind of like a non-plot. I don't know how to explain it without giving spoilers but it was kind of like a we were going all over the place novel and I thought it was good. I really liked the banter in this. I thought that that was the strongest part as the same I thought for Powerless. It was really good. I liked the relationship a lot but the relationship is starting to feel really stagnant because of how drawn out it is and all of the banter and things like that. Like you make a progression in the relationship and then you take, you know, like two steps back. So it's a lot of that of like, will they, won't they? And I know that Lauren Roberts really likes banter and tension. She's said that at the book signing and it's obvious through her books. So if that's your thing, you're really going to like this. But I think that it kind of costs the relationship progression and actual plot of the story to have so much banter in your books and so much will they won't they I guess it kind of takes away in my opinion from the book I thought it was really good I have a lot of things tabbed as you can tell and those were parts that were making me giggle and I was having fun but I think her plot and her world building really suffer because of how much she focuses on the relationship especially with it being a fantasy romance and it not just being a romance I think that that kind of takes away from it. I will say I really enjoy her books and I am going to continue but they just don't necessarily stand up to what I normally hold other fantasy romances at like the standard that I would hold for those just because this has so much tension and banter which I enjoy and so I give it props for that and I feel like it can make mistakes in other places because of all of the really good relationship parts in this so I did enjoy it and I had a lot of fun and I think that you should read this if you like Powerless you will like this it's just in terms of the actual meat of the story I think that that needs a little bit of work but this is only Lauren Roberts second novel and like third book total because she has a novella in the middle and I am really impressed and I loved the novella so I don't 
really have many bad things to say about her writing other than I think with time it'll only get better. So I did really enjoy this and I would recommend it. She did just announce that the third book is going to come out in April of 2025 I believe so I'm really looking forward to that and that should be really good. It's also going to wrap up this trilogy which I think is a good length for this. I felt like this definitely suffered from middle book syndrome but it wasn't horrible. It was just kind of like you could tell that it was kind of a bridge book between where she started and then where she's going with the story. And I am going to visit my friends this weekend so I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done but I am going to bring the Jane Austen book club with me and I might bring one other book. I really want to get into the Jane Austen book club. I want to give it its fair chance before I really decide on anything but I think that with Reckless coming out and everything I was just more excited about that book so I let myself read that especially since I don't want to get into a reading slump with books and forcing myself to read. Obviously reading is just for fun so picking up Reckless I think was a good in-between for that and now I'm going to go back to Jane Austen Book Club and hopefully make more progress in that. It's been a few days since I talked to y'all last. Uh, actually, it's been almost a week since I talked to you last, and I am now reading Lullaby by Chuck Palahniuk. And this is the author of Fight Club and Choke, and I just picked up this book at Goodwill and I wanted to read it. I actually found it a few months ago and then put it on my Goodreads as a want to read but I didn't buy it and it was at Half Price Books and then I found it at Goodwill for two bucks so now I'm reading it and it has a very very interesting premise that I'm really enjoying. It's about this reporter and he is he is reporting on all of these crib deaths and so all of these babies are dying mysteriously and in each of the scenes where the babies were found dead there is a book the same book at every one of them open to page 27 and he figures out that there's a poem or a rhyme on this page that specifically is called a culling song and so it kills the person that the poem is intended towards so like if you read it aloud towards someone the person that it's directed at that is hearing it will die and so he finds this out and then now he knows the calling song and it's up to him to decide what he's going to do about it so super interesting premise i really really like it and it has this kind of underlying theme constantly of sound and like the fear of sound but also the power of sound and also how people don't really understand or think about sound all that much like you can tune it out even though it's constantly around and the importance of silence or the lack of silence that we constantly have i don't know it's just a really interesting conversation about it and repeatedly whenever the scene is set in each of the chapters or sometimes every few chapters we get the sound that's happening around the main character and he gets really frustrated he's very sensitive to sound and so there's these really great paragraphs that just describe how he's feeling and how he's understanding and taking in the sound when people around him aren't and i want to read a paragraph out loud that i think is really really good through the walls come horses screaming and cannon fire either a brave stubborn southern bell is trying to keep the union army from burning the apartment next door or somebody's television is too loud down through the ceiling comes a fire siren and people screaming that we're supposed to ignore. Then gunshots and tires squealing. Sounds we have to pretend are okay. They don't mean anything. It's just television. An explosion vibrates down the stairs. A woman begs someone not to... her. It's not real. It's just a movie. We're the culture that cried wolf. And constantly he's giving these people names and right following that it says these drama holics these piece of phobics and he's constantly labeling people like that and how they don't understand what the sound is doing and really aren't taking it seriously i guess don't understand the levity of the sound and i really like that in this story it would feel like it would be really repetitive because of how often it happens but it's almost like you forget that it's going to happen and then it comes back around and he says the same thing again and it's almost like you tuned out what happened before in the same way that all of these people are tuning out the sound that they're hearing and the meaning behind the sound that they're hearing i'm really loving it i really appreciate that about this book and it's pretty short it's like 250 ish pages and recently i've been loving short books so that's really been nice but Overall, 
I like it a lot so far, but it's not necessarily my favorite book I've ever read. I just find it really interesting and don't exactly know where it's going to go or how it's going to be resolved. So I'm looking forward to continuing with it and letting you know what I think. Hello again. I went to the pool today and laid out and I read for a long time. I also stayed up late last night reading Lullaby by Chuck. Bear with me. Palaniuk? Palan Palaniuk? If I'm saying that wrong, actually, please correct me. I want to know how to say it. I could just look it up, but will I? I don't know. We'll see. Um, I just want to kind of chat a little bit because I feel like I never chat with my vlog because it feels like, I don't know, weird to do, but I just want to start making my vlogs a little bit chattier. Um, so first things first, I had a girls weekend this weekend because one of my best friends is moving out of state and we did some crafting so i made these little stars and they're a little bit creepy but i also think they're kind of cute um so these are my two felt stars i think i'm gonna put them on little hangers and like hang them up on my bed or something i think they're kind of sweet and then my friend katie got me this beautiful copy of emma look at how stunning that is i love it I'm so excited and I have not read Emma so I need to get to that. We also went thrifting and I picked up some buttons at an antique store and I think they're also cute. This one says book it with Millie Millennium and it has look it says ebook. I need to look up what original e-readers look like because that's actually crazy. And then I also got two more buttons. One of them looks like this. It's open books, open minds and it's for band book week. And then I also got this one, which says, gather information at your library. And I'm in school right now to be a librarian. So I thought that that was really cute. And then while we went thrifting this weekend, I picked up a few different books. I've been really excited to read classics again. I don't know, in the summer, I'm just not really in the mood for fantasy romance, which is like, I would say probably my favorite genre, even though I just read Reckless, but that was kind of an exception because it was a new one coming out. But I have a lot of unread fantasy romance and I'm not necessarily like looking to pick them up. I just will read new releases whenever they come out. So I picked up The Catcher in the Rye and Katie kind of explained to me what this was about. And I didn't take AP classes in high school, so I missed out on a lot of the like classics that you read in school, I guess. So I'm excited to pick that one up. And then I also picked up Brave New World, another one I'm excited for. And I think that this one is... Yeah, Utopian Society, which I'm really excited for. That's kind of one of my favorite ideas to explore. And then Killers of the Flower Moon. These are all from Goodwill, so that's why I picked them up. I wouldn't normally buy this many books, like at half price books or anything, but Goodwill, the books are $2, so I kind of don't put a limit on myself, <laughs> which is not good. But um, I also got House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, and I've seen a lot about this book going around recently, so I was excited to see it at Goodwill. And yeah, that's kind of all the stuff that I just wanted to like talk about or whatever from this weekend, but I finished Lullaby. I don't know how to feel about this book. The writing was really, really good. Let me say that. I tabbed quite a bit in this book. I really liked a lot of the quotes that were going on in here and a lot of the just like food for thought, I guess, kind of discussions. The quotes were really, really good. And I literally would read them and then I would reread them and then I would reread them. And then I would underline them while I was rereading them and then tap them. Like I really was having like meaningful discussion with myself while I was reading this book, which I loved. I feel like I don't get that out of a ton of books, which that's on me. I don't read too many thought provoking books. I feel like I like romance and I don't know fantasy, science fiction, you know, whatever floats my way. I'm trying to get into more literary fiction. So this was, I feel like not a bad place to be. So I'm not sure how to feel about this book because there was a lot of like just obscene things in this book. And I'm not really a reader that enjoys that, I guess. I don't mind obscene things in books whenever they kind of stimulate discussion or have a purpose. But sometimes in this book, it just felt like the just really intense kind of graphic scenes were just there to be there which is actually my least favorite because I don't necessarily prefer them so when they're just there and I'm not really feeling like they're all that necessary I kind of think that they could have been left out and this book has a lot of like existential dread it's a very heavy book the trope is kind of 
person that delves into madness like slowly throughout the book and I really appreciated that. That's a trope that I like but I don't know. I guess the whole book I didn't really know where it was going so whenever it ended the way that it did I was kind of like okay <sighs> yeah that's okay. Like I'm not really moved by it because I felt like that ending was just kind of there. I guess I don't know maybe maybe I need to think on it some more and I thought the premise of this book was super interesting and there were a lot of topics in this book that I absolutely loved. I think I touched on one earlier which was the like noise versus sound versus listening kind of thing. There was also a huge interest in what power does to humans in this book. That was like I would say probably the main idea that was explored in this book but there was also grief and explorations of humanity and a little bit of spirituality. I don't know it had a lot of different things wrapped up in this book and I was really impressed by how many topics he covered and I thought he covered well in just 260 pages. I was really shocked. I kind of felt like when I finished this book like a lot of longer books that are upwards of 500 pages don't accomplish the amount of topics that were meaningfully discussed in a book that was only 260 pages so I really really loved that. I think that I would recommend this book if literary fiction kind of like the strange literary fiction is your cup of tea because I feel like literary fiction doesn't really cover everything that's in this and I feel like a lot of literary fiction goes outside of literary fiction. I think some of this could have been classified as horror so I don't know I just didn't know what to expect going into it but I loved the writing. I will definitely be reading more of his books but I think that I was just unprepared for what I was getting into but I really did appreciate it once I kind of understood what was happening because the beginning like the premise is so not normal I guess because like the culling song is a very strange thing like a poem that can kill people but the way that it went I was just it just kept getting weirder and kept getting stranger and like you just have to buckle in and go along for the ride so I did like it. I think that I don't even know what I would rate it. I think that I am going to think about this book a lot just because like I said the quotes in it were so incredible and quotes usually stick with me more than like a plot so the fact that this book had a plot that I wasn't super connected to didn't really matter to me. It was more of the topics covered so yeah I liked it. I think that I would give it mm, maybe maybe like a four. I don't know. Some parts of it I absolutely loved and at the beginning I was like oh yeah this is definitely gonna be a five star but then it just kept getting really 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 intense. Kind of graphic so I don't know. At times I loved it. At times I was very uh, kind of turned away from it. I'm not quite sure which book I'm going to pick up next. I might pick up one of the ones that I got at Goodwill this weekend or I mean I have about a million books on my TBR so hello again everyone it has been days since I talked to you and I went to Barnes and Noble with my mom and I had a gift card for 20 bucks and when I was checking out I also had five dollars worth of rewards so they actually paid me 60 cents to buy my books which I was really excited about so I picked up I Who Have Never Known Men and Ripe and I Who've Never Known Men is by Jacqueline Harpman and it was translated from French and Ripe is by Sarah Rose Eder, Eater, I'm not sure but I've seen both of these recommended quite a bit on the literary fiction side of like book social media so I was really excited to pick both of them up and I've loved this title I Who Have Never Known Men forever since I like first heard about it and so I decided to grab them with my gift card and I'm reading I Who Have Never Known Men right now. I'm on page 30 and there are 160 four pages in this book which is literally nothing. I guess you could consider this a novella but the premise of it basically is 40 women are underground in a cage and there's these like guards around them and they're not allowed to touch each other or hurt themselves I guess and it's kind of this we don't know what's going on and it's told from the perspective of a girl who has never met a man before. She's the only one who hasn't met a man. The rest of the women were adults whenever they were put in this cage but she was a child whenever she was put in. I'm not really sure where it's going because I kind of thought that this was more like 40 women underground 
none of them have met men and they have to get out and it's kind of like a dynamic of seeing how women act when they've never had a man in their life I guess and like the way that men influence a lot of women's lives I guess and it's not that at all it's this one girl who hasn't met a man I don't know I'm pretty confused right now I'm doing a terrible job of explaining it but it's really interesting so far and it's her writing retrospectively so at the point we're at right now where she's writing from I think all of the other women are gone I don't know how they're gone if they're dead or if they were let out or what's going on it doesn't really give you much context it just says that she's writing like from the present and writing back on whenever she was in this cage with all these women so it is super interesting so far and then ripe i don't really know what ripe is about i know it's about late capitalism and it basically being like a nightmare and it's a woman's journey through that and it says a year into her dream job at a cutthroat silicon valley startup cassie is burned out sleep deprived and still living paycheck to paycheck she struggles to reconcile the glittering promise of tech with an untenable cost of living and the abject poverty all around her ivy league grads complained about the snack selection from a conference room with a view of unhoused people bathing in the bay Desperate men leap into the paths of commuter trains or set themselves on fire in the streets. And everywhere Cassie goes, a miniature black hole follows her, growing or shrinking in relation to her distress. Its relentless pull draws her even closer as the world around her unravels. When Cassie winds up unexpectedly pregnant and her CEO's demands go from unethical to illegal, this hovering embodiment of her anxiety and depression threatens to consume her. Doubting everything she's worked toward, Cassie must decide whether the tempting fruits of Silicon Valley are really worth it or if there's something better waiting for her beyond there the event horizon i've seen a lot of people recommend this i'm not like super interested in that premise i guess like that's not something that super duper draws me in but i've heard people love this and it's like a really i think it's recommended as like one of those weird books that's like just super strange and i usually like books like that so i'm really interested not that the premise doesn't interest me it's just that's not normally my genre i guess so i'm interested to see how it goes i see this recommended absolutely everywhere so i'm very excited to pick this one up but for now i'm going to continue i who have never known men and hopefully i can finish this today i did not realize how short it was i was kind of thinking it was 200 200 something pages but 164 is not much so i have 134 pages left and i will update you either part of the way through or when i finish it okay, it's later the same day and i am now on page 102 of i who have never known men and this book is not at all what i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be very didactic i guess and kind of exploratory in feminist themes but it's not quite that and it's more focusing on isolation and like what it means to be human and less about what it means to be like a woman specifically I guess kind of I don't know it's very very different than I thought it was going to be I am liking it and it's a very easy read like I said I'm on page 102 the writing is very simplistic it's also written in the perspective of the girl that was in the bunker. I think that I need to have read the whole story before I actually decide the meaning behind it and if I feel like I got much out of it because at this point I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, like everything that she says, I'm kind of thinking about it and then just moving past it. Like nothing's really hitting me very hard, which I thought that this book was going to be like really hard hitting. I went into it thinking that it was going to pack a huge punch and just really change my perspective on everything. It's been okay. So I'm going to keep reading and I will let you know what I think when I have finished this. It's currently 11.34 at night. So I don't know if I'll finish this tonight. I hope that I will, but those are my thoughts so far. I'm not blown out of the water, but I think that I still could be. I've only read literally a couple of pages since I was last talking to you, but I think the thing that threw me off is I thought it was going to be a lot about specifically a woman's experience in life, but it's more about being raised without any experiences in life because obviously they're all trapped in a bunker and so she doesn't have any experiences to draw off of at all. Like 
she doesn't know very much language she doesn't know the rules of anything she doesn't understand like how a society could be crafted or like pressures of society or really anything at all it's kind of like a raised by wolf scenario where she doesn't understand that like going to the bathroom and people watching you is embarrassing like she just doesn't understand concepts that are like made up and I think that that's really what the author is trying to explore is like how pretty much everything in society is constructed. One of the things I do like about this is there's this kind of idea of like the main character who's just called child and doesn't even have a name and kind of starting at square one and not really having all of these pressures of society or any context really and so there are things that the women don't really want to explain to her because she has no reason to know them like she's never gonna need to know those things so why would they explain them to her and it's kind of this idea of like knowledge for the sake of knowledge sake that's kind of interesting to me because if you're never going to apply it is it even really knowledge or is knowledge only like knowledge when it's actually applied that's kind of an interesting idea and then this also as I'm reading I continue to think that this is very much like Lord of the Flies. This whole book is like, I just keep thinking of like, it's like a purgatory or like hell situation because, oh my gosh, if I had to live in this, it's almost like even raising the question of like, is this life worth living? Which is like super dark and super morbid, but like we have this kind of idea that life is worth living because of the joy and you know the shared experience and the context of our lives and the meaning that is brought to you by like family and friends and if you take all of that away and you just have this like horrible shared trauma with like no end in sight can you find meaning in life i don't know it's this really like dark thing that they're kind of toying with and it's interesting to read about but it's very very morbid. Okay, yeah, I like this quote. Like I was saying, like, it's super morbid and just depressing. Oh my gosh. It says, it was only at the moment of death that they admitted their despair and rushed headlong towards the great dark doors that I opened for them, leaving the sterile plain where their lives had gone awry without a backward glance, eager to embrace another world, which perhaps didn't exist, but they preferred nothingness to the futile succession of empty days. Good morning, everyone. It is 8 o'clock, 7.57, and I am going on a trip today, and for some reason, I just convinced myself that I had to be ready at 7.45 to leave for this trip to be there at 11, but it's two hours away. I don't really know what I was on, so now I can finish it. I have 18 pages left. I was just so exhausted last night because it was like... 2 a.m. or something while I was trying to finish this and I had no brain cells left. So I am still kind of feeling the same way about it. I am appreciating it for what it is and I'm kind of developing more ideas about the themes in this book but it's just not something I think that I really love or that is my type of book I guess. Like it's interesting but I am more of a reader for the writing style and this is such a plain writing style and obviously that's a literary device in this book but it's not super up my alley so i'm going to finish this and then give you my final thoughts and then i will head on my trip and i will finish this vlog up okay i have literally just finished i who have never known men by jacqueline hartman and i actually like this book. I think with time I will like it more. It's one of those books that I'll really need to think on because I had kind of a misunderstanding of this book when I went into it thinking that it was kind of plot heavy and more of a story I guess and it's more of a book to ponder the human condition which I didn't really understand going into it and the more I think about the themes in this even as I'm reading it the more that I'm liking it so I think like I said with time it'll grow on me but this was definitely a book about if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, did it make a sound? It's kind of like the impact of being a human without the context of humanity that we have right now and what it means to be human if there is like an essential kind of essence to humanity or if it's created by those around us and the connections we make and the places that we live, things like that. So I did think that it was 
good. I wasn't a huge, huge fan of the writing, but again, it was very much a stylistic choice because the person that's writing this book is a woman that was raised in a cage with 39 other women. I liked how many themes were going on for such a short book. I have to really think about them and kind of condense them, but I feel like there was obviously the reckoning with what is humanity. There was the idea that community gives life meaning, but also if you've never really understood what the meaning of life is, does life need a meaning? And is there reprieve in any sort of afterlife? And whether or not there's something essential to each person in their humanity, like nature versus nurture, and whether or not having something that helped you understand life before and then it being taken away is better than never having any context for your life and then never knowing any after that, whether it's better to kind of create it on your own. I don't know, there's a lot of interesting discussion in this and there's like a million more things that you could talk about in this book, but I don't know if it's like the actual topics in this book or what, but this just didn't hit me as hard as I thought it was going to. And I can see how people love this. Like I really can. As I was reading it, I was like, I feel like I should be finding this profound, but there's just parts of it where I'm like, okay. And again, I don't know if it was the writing style, but I will stop rambling. But overall, I think that I would probably give this like maybe a four, maybe like a 3.5. Like I said, it kind of reminded me of Lord of the Flies in that kind of like plot context kind of way and like discovering what it means to be human outside of the normal context of humanity. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of The Alchemist in that kind of like simple trying to find the meaning of life sort of parable way. And this is obviously a very different take on it, but I definitely think I would recommend this book if this sounds like it's up your alley, but I just wouldn't go into it thinking that it's a story about the women in the cage with a plot, I guess. It's more of like a philosophical kind of like existential understanding of humanity book, which I think if I had known that going in, I would have liked it a lot more. Okay, that is all I have to say on this book. I feel like I could talk about this for hours because I'm so up in the air about how I feel about it. But like I said, I think I'll like it more as time goes on just because I haven't had enough time to really sit with it. So that is my last book for this reading vlog. So I read Reckless and then I read Lullaby and then I read I Who Have Never Known Men. So I've had some very different reads as far as range in this reading vlog and I enjoyed all of them. I had a really good time. I always appreciate y'all watching and I hope you're having a great day. Let me know what you're reading down below in the comments if you're reading anything currently or if there's a book that you're wanting to read or if you've read any of these books you can let me know your thoughts i would love to talk about them and i will see you guys again soon bye